live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2016. Brought to you by AWS and its ecosystem partners. Now, here's your host, Stu Miniman. And we're back here at AWS reInvent 2016. SiliconANGLE Media is theCUBE program. We're the worldwide leader in live enterprise tech coverage. Happy to welcome back to the program uh, two of our CUBE alums from InfoOptics. Uh, I've got the CEO, Rishi Yadav, uh, President and CEO, and Sudhir Jangan, uh, who's the uh, Chief Technology Officer. Gentlemen, uh, thanks so much for joining us. How's things yeah. going? Yeah, great to be back on CUBE. All right, uh, you know, we, we talk about, you know, th this is the culmination of so many things uh, going on here, you know, developers are here, uh, you, you know, uh, so many different uh, technologies are here, um, data is here. Uh, you know, Rishi, I guess let's start with you, you know, how's public cloud, you know, changing your business, uh, impact, you know, your, your fit into kind of the whole AWS story? Yeah, so uh, I mean public cloud started with the startups and as it's becoming more mainstream, uh, what we see is a convergence of uh, big data, open source and analytics into public cloud. So, so everything is becoming public cloud. Now public cloud, uh, especially the AWS part became famous for uh, the infrastructure as a service, the IAS piece and then it became the PaaS piece, and now this is uh, come, even from the PaaS is moving to the functions as a service and backend as a service. So this is kind of interesting that the whole big data movement, which was about analytics, uh, uh, is definitely uh, converging into the public cloud, uh, but uh, the old school uh, web applications, even they are becoming the great candidates for function as a service. So you are going to see this great convergence here where when everything, all the applications uh, which are uh, written in the pre-cloud era, they are all going to explode and disintegrate and they are going to be re-architected uh, uh, to be uh, public cloud native. Yeah. Uh, Sudhir, I want to bring you into the discussion here. Can, can you help you know, map out a little bit for us how you know, the, we talk kind of the open source stuff and the, and the public cloud, uh, you know, most of the open source things, a lot of it started with kind of web scale architectures, uh, so, so we understand how, how that fits in some way, but how do you see those coming together and uh, how do you look at those kind of technology building blocks? So, uh, for example, like say, uh, a lot of new services are being like, say, introduced in like, AWS also, like say we were in the keynote, right? So um, now you have like say, uh, uh, for example, Lambda functions are available, right? So a lot of these uh, like say websites or portals which are being developed like say uh, uh, peak cloud thing were based on like say your monolithic uh, kind of application. Now like say you have, uh, uh, for example, like the uh, API gateway in front, then like say Lambda on back. And then, like, say, for a store, you can use like a lot of like say NoSQL databases, right? So this new architecture is coming up nowadays, right? Yeah, I, I mean, uh, such huge interest in all the serverless technology. Yeah, yeah. The serverless is the term that they use. Use the functions as a service or FaaS uh, kind of fits in. Um, and now, like, say, because of these elastic nature of things, for example, like, say, uh, in deep learning or machine learning, you'll need, like, say, uh, GPU instances or those things. Now that is also part of AWS offering, right? So you can have elastic GPUs, right? So. Yeah, so for customers to truly take advantage of you know, everything that's coming out, does that have to happen in the public cloud now? Can uh, you know, data centers that, that the enterprise have uh, you know, do some of these things, or is it kind of a foregone conclusion that you know, to really do some of these, I, I, I need you know, the breadth of services that uh, you know, Amazon and others are offering? I think it will be a hybrid approach, right, Rishi, so. Uh, at, least, at least for the timing, it's going to be hybrid, but uh, uh, I think uh, more and more workload are going to shift to the public cloud. Uh, so I don't think that uh, data centers are going to be the first place uh, uh, where data will be stored or processed. Uh, yes, there will be some uh, legacy uh, uh, data centers. Uh, I look at hybrid in a way that uh, there are going to be some servers which are going to be uh, at the say company headquarters and. Uh, uh, those places from where they have to connect because developers are still, they're not going to sit at AWS, right? So, so developers are going to sit in their offices. So that is the kind of connectivity which is going to remain there. And in fact, uh, that's where we, we are going to, we are going to uh, announce our product around uh, the, exactly the same thing today. Right. 
Yeah, what, 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 are you talk, what, what are you talking to customers about, the kind of the new, the new uh, piece that you've got here at the show? Yeah, so, uh, so, so what we see with the customers is that, number one, it is a cloud-first approach, right? So I mean, every customer we are dealing with, they already have decided that which public cloud they are going to go to. And uh, what going to happen down the line is that uh, rather than putting all the eggs in one basket, they are going to go for, uh, people You call it uh, multi-cloud approach, I call it uh, a dual cloud approach. Most of the companies are going to have just two clouds, right? And maybe they are uh, AWS and Azure. I mean, yeah, maybe Google Cloud. Uh, so, uh, and what's going to happen is now uh, to move loads between these two uh, clouds, uh, uh, companies need uh, the agility. And that's where the product which uh, we, are, we are thrilled to announce, uh, the name of the product is PCO, that is a public cloud orchestrator. And uh, our product sits on desktop, so which is uh, slightly different in the cloud space. So what we are doing is that we are providing a desktop product in which you can do all the orchestration, all the simulation on your desktop before moving your load to the cloud in a secure way, right? So you can, for example, if you have a machine learning load, right? So all the, all the simulation of the load, all, all parameter optimization, all the hyperparameter optimization, all that you can do on your desktop. And then at the runtime you choose, uh, maybe it's better to uh, run that load on AWS or maybe on Azure at a given point of time, right? Maybe the maybe the uh, uh, maybe the spot instances on uh, AWS are cheaper at this uh, at this hour. So. Yeah. And we'll be providing with like uh, some kind of local simulation also there. Uh, for example, you are at uh, like say following that dual cloud approach, right? You can like say uh, simulate like say your configuration on Azure as well as on AWS or Google Cloud. Yep. So, and after simulation, I think next target is local testing, where we can simulate the testing, what exactly is going to happen on cloud when you move these things to the cloud. Uh, so, so I wonder if you can unpack for us a little bit. There's been some discussion about uh, you know, data movement, uh, you know, you know where, where my data lives, and also like data locality. How important is that? You know, what do you hear from customers? You talked about, you know, and how, how do things like multi-cloud fit into all of those? Uh, regarding data movement? Yeah, what well, data movement and does data locality matter? Mm -hmm. Data okay. residency. Yeah, may, okay. So, I mean, uh, so, uh, I think the data residency piece is, I think that's the basically multi-region approach is what yeah. already, uh, so the, I'm data residency which, for example, on the on-prem is a big deal, right? I mean, in, in case of uh, the public cloud, I mean, multi-region uh, just takes care of it, right? So. Multi-region or like say, um, availability zones are there, yeah, right? So, you can. Yeah. Use those okay, so, so, yeah, I, I get that, that's part of it, right? Is does the public cloud offer enough of it? Um, you know, are there service providers that are going to need, need to fill in the gaps there? It sounds like you're saying, like especially Amazon with kind of their coverage. Uh, you know, the, 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 yeah, that's yeah. sufficient today. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, anything out of the announcements this week that kind of caught your interest or something there? Kind of your customers or your product line where you think things should be going? Uh, for example, like the uh, new uh, services uh, around chatbots. For example. Lex and Polly, they were announced, right? And we are doing a lot of work in chatbot space. Uh, we are uh, creating a lot of chatbots for a lot of organization for their, uh, for example, uh, providing chat supports to their say, end users, right? So uh, I think those uh, having those around will help. They're definitely going to help us, right? Yeah, AI is definitely a really, really interesting use case. Rishi, what are you hearing from customers? Uh, you know, conversations you're having uh, here at the show, and uh, you know, what, what are some of the main concerns you hear from kind of the C-suite? So for our customers, uh, uh, I mean, as, uh, uh, as you know, that our uh, focus has been on uh, a Spark uh, primarily, and that is going to remain our focus. Uh, so. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, when Spark-based uh, workloads are moving to AWS, uh, uh, there is a lot of optimization work that needs to be done. So this is what we are consistently hearing from last two days, right? So every customer is saying that you know we can definitely use more uh, more help in making Spark faster, right? Making it lower latency, scaling it up. So so that's so that's that's what we that's what we consistently see here. Okay. Um. Sudhir, you know, I'm curious, IOT, you know, going to be a huge influx of data. Is that something impacts uh, what, what you guys are looking at? So in IOT space, we are doing a lot of work right now. And that is uh, being done on, let's say, for example, uh, 
uh, for one of our customers, like so a lot of data is coming from these sensors, right? And we are using some kind of a Spark streaming on top of that. Then we are doing some kind of analytics or real-time processing to further process the data, right? Now Kinesis is there, right? So you can use these kind of services also to do the similar kind of stuff, right? Rishi, can you give me some commentary on what it's like to be an Amazon partner, kind of the ecosystem here, uh, you know, how's that dynamic work for a company like yours? You mean the AWS partnership? Yeah, being a partner with Amazon. No, no, Amazon, I mean, I've written a lot about it. I mean, Amazon uh, is a company which did not uh, have a lot of customer focus. I mean, when I'm using the word customer, I mean the enterprise focus. Yeah. They've learned it really, really fast. I mean, yesterday I had a meeting with the partnership folks at Amazon, it's amazing. I mean, they are, they are very good at, uh, they are very much intent on uh, developing a great partner ecosystem. They value partners a lot, and which, which, is, uh, which is really exciting news for, for all uh, companies like us, right, that Amazon wants to uh, uh, go to the, the customers and prospects along with us and, and help them with, the, with their uh, uh, migration to the public cloud. So no, I, I, it's, it's, it's been great. I mean, it's just been a few months we have been Amazon partner, but it's, it's been a great journey so far. Sudhir, so, so I want to get your, your, your thoughts on something. You know, there's some people that look at, you know, you know Amazon's going to announce a thousand new features. They've got APIs all over the place for everything, and you know, APIs are good, of course, mm. um, but, uh, you know, is it easy to work with, you know, the, just this influx of things? Uh, you know, when you, you look at kind of your technology roadmap, uh, you know, is the pace of innovation, yeah. you know, and, and yeah, all the there APIs. There are thousands of services, but let's say companies like us, consulting space, right? So we are there to help on those part, right? So obviously, let's say, because of thousands of services around there, you need to understand the complete API structure and everything, and it becomes quite, quite complex. So, and companies like us, let's say, they can really help the customers moving forward, right? right? Rishi, I want to give you the final word, you know, kind of key takeaways, things you want uh, to take away as we, you know, look, look to leave AWS 2016. Yeah, so just to add to Sudhir's point, right, tools uh, and solutions, right? So Amazon is providing uh, more and more tools uh, for customers, but the customers need solutions and that's where we fill in the gap, right? Mm -hmm. Using Amazon's tools and, and I'm very bullish on all the PaaS and the FAS and the BAS offerings, uh, uh, which uh, which Amazon has uh, basically functions and uh, uh, and the microservices uh, that the API gateway and all right and and that's where we are there we see immense opportunity to uh, help guide the clients uh, in their uh, in uh, redeploying their uh, applications on cloud and getting the most value out of it. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to leave it there. You know, cloud enabling all the services uh, that you talked about. Uh, th thanks, Introvix, for joining us again. Look forward to seeing you at uh, you know s s some of our our coverage as we go into 2017. We'll be back with lots more coverage here of AWS reInvent 2016 in Las Vegas. You're watching the Cube.